Hello, my name is John Sayre, Technical Marketing Manager, Civil Infrastructure here at Autodesk. Today I'd like to take you through part three of four of our VR virtual reality creation using the AEC Collection series. This is VR Level 1 Drone to VR. And again, I call it VR Level 1 because we're taking our existing conditions data, or in this particular instance, a construction site, and we're going to bring it into a virtual reality experience so that we can start to make additional design decisions, uh, maybe do some checking on the project, things of that nature. And remember, this doesn't just have uh, relativity to just your office. You could have multiple offices that people are experiencing the same virtual reality experience as you are using the HTC Vive. So let's get started. So in the last session, part two of four, we were inside of InfraWorks and we used InfraWorks as our aggregator for our data. We then exported out an FBX file or a couple FBX files of the information so that we could bring it into 3ds Max. From 3ds Max, we'll be able to push it straight to 3ds Max Interactive, which is gonna generate our VR. So I've got my folder system here. It's still building out. I've added my videos to it, but don't worry about that. So we've got FBX out from InfraWorks. So we've got these two files that it generated from InfraWorks. So we're going to import those into 3ds Max. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to import those files. So I would just path out to that directory and select my ground. We'll start with one. I'll hit Open. You do not have to change anything here for the presets. Uh, just hit OK. And you'll see, I'm going to do this real time. I'm going to leave this running. You'll see that things start to populate here on the left. And the, the mesh information, the surface information, the images, those things are all going to come in from that FBX file. Now, you will see uh, some black boxes around the outside where the actual drone image connected to the Bing imagery from InfraWorks. All right. And that is uh, something that is common, that you do see those black areas. And again, that's where it stitches the two images together. But it does not make any difference because what we're concerned with is what's inside of that drone image area. All right, so we, we won't be bothered by the black boxes that are on the outside. All right, so once it's inside of 3ds Max, let's go ahead and bring in the buildings too. So I'll go ahead and hit import and I'll bring in the buildings also and hit OK. And you'll be able to see that building. This is a building directly from InfraWorks. All right, so you can see that. You can also see the roads that came in from InfraWorks. So that type of model builder information does come in and, and work very, very nicely. And it just helps to enrich your VR experience. So first thing I would do is I go ahead and save. All right, so I'm going to save. And I'm going to go out to that same folder system. And again, this is why I keep preaching about this. Um, I would build myself a 3ds Max folder. Um, and I'll just say 3ds Max model. All right. And I'll double click in there and I'll call this in dot. And I'll hit save. And my model is saved. Now, we could recreate this very quickly, but if you're like me, you don't like recreating things. So if I can save them and that takes that away, then that's what I'm going to do. So once that's saved, we need to run a script um, here inside of 3ds Max that actually will rename all of the textures so that they're friendly to 3ds Max Interactive. If not, you'd have to go back in and you would have to rename those, those uh, textures, and that's a tedious process. So we have a script that does that. If you would like this script, please email me at john.sayer, and I spell my last name S-A-Y-R-E, at autodesk.com. Tell me that you watched the video and that you'd like the script, and I'll email you the script, okay? So I'm going to bring in that script, and that script is just called, and I'll show you this in Windows Explorer, it's called the Fix InfraWorks Meshinator, all right? So I'm just going to drag and drop it on the screen, and there's a few things we want to do here, all right? First off, I'm going to scroll back, and I'm going to select everything in my on my model, all right? And then I'm going to put a check mark in everywhere I can. All right. The hardest part about running this script is browsing out and putting these in a different folder. So it's going to generate new textures that it's going to push to 3ds Max Interactive. So I'm going to go back to my folder system. All right. And you do have to scroll out to it. All right. So I'll go to 2018 
here, and I'm going to create a new folder called New Textures. All right, you can, again, you can name this whatever you want. Now, notice that New Textures is selected, and it just says New Folder. Go ahead and pick another folder and then pick New Textures so that it does populate correctly. Once that's done, you simply just hit Go. All right, so I'm going to hit Go. And it doesn't really look like it's doing anything, but if I look in Windows Explorer, you can see it's generating all of those textures for me. All right, so I'm not having to build these in the naming convention that it needs to be named. So once those are built, we can go ahead and close the Meshinator, and we can hit File and Save, and we are done, basically, inside of 3ds Max. Now, if you have 3ds Max Interactive installed, you will have an interactive pull-down, all right? And once this gets through saving here, we'll go ahead and select that interactive pull-down. So I'll go ahead and select it and show you where we're going to go next. We're basically going to open up 3ds Max Interactive, and we're going to select Level Send All, and it's going to pick everything in here and push it directly into a project and build an environment for us inside of 3ds Max Interactive, which is our gaming engine, which is where we're going to deploy our VR, or our virtual reality experience. All right? So... Not very much to do in 3ds Max, but 3ds Max and 3ds Max Interactive work hand in hand here uh, with this pull down menu. So once we've ran the script, we have everything in here that we want, and we're ready to push this to 3ds Max Interactive. That's everything for part three of four. Be looking for part four of four in the same playlist on YouTube. Thank you.